we've been we've been rallying, we've been picketing, we've been sending letters, we've been lobbying uh, for a couple of years now, and uh, the Postmaster General since July has been closing these mail processing plants. He's closed 30 percent of them already, and he's on he's on track to close the Salem plant, the Bend plant, the Pendleton plant uh, by the end of this year, and then the Springfield plant after that, and. Uh, <coughs> The tactics we've been using so far have not have not uh, been sufficient to stop this uh, this, at this assault on this um, this traditional American institution, which serves 100 million families a day. You know, the best, most affordable, most efficient mail uh, delivery system in the world. So we're going to be marching into the back of the plant, and we're going to be sitting in and demanding that that the that postal management keep this plant open to serve the people of this community. Well, we're not going to leave until the uh, the, po po the postal decision makers either agree to keep this plant open or have us removed. Tell me what what's going on here. What's going on here? Yeah. I personally am here. I don't get a lot of mail. It's basically junk mail and a couple of bills. But as a veteran, my concern is the uh, Postal Service is the second largest governmental employee, and 23% of all postal workers are veterans. And it's been estimated that at least 60,000 veterans will lose their jobs if these cuts are allowed to go through. So that's why I'm out here today speaking up. Are you a veteran? I am. Uh -huh. Navy. You're active duty, four and a half active reserves. So veterans' issues are really big with me. Okay. So. Thanks for speaking up and telling us what's going on here. So. Great. Delay. No way. We say, they say, delay, we say, no way. We say, no way. Delay. No way. Delay. Six days service in all facilities. <laughs> Do you feel like telling me some of the info about uh, this postal uh, shutdown? Well, I, that I, they're mean, I, I know that they're trying to do it basically nationwide and they're trying to shut down not only uh, the processing centers across the nation, uh, quite a few. I've heard uh, you know numbers as much as about 80,000 people that are supposed to end up being unemployed at some point. I haven't, you know, but uh, and they're trying to shut down a lot of the uh, the offices in the rural areas, but now they've just got it to where they're shutting, reducing the hours and stuff on there too. So, um, what's gonna, what's that gonna be to people for people in Salem trying to mail a letter? It's gonna have well, to go through Portland. It's gonna go through Portland, that's and that's also down for a bunch yeah, yeah, it's through Eugene Springfield. Theirs is gonna be shut down. I think there's also one in Bend, and I think there's also one in Grants Pass or Medford, and then uh, another one, I think the Hillsboro one in Portland, and so everything's going to go through the one Portland location. So th that's the, a lot of people will get a lot slower mail service. Oh well, yeah, you could mail a letter to someone across the street and it'll take four or five days to get there. you got to ship it to Portland and back down here to right, yeah. deliver it. So you get it across the street. carbon footprint? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah, <laughs> good point. That's very unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's people that get their medication and stuff through the mail, so that's going to take a lot longer, too. And also checks and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a big carbon footprint. Yeah. Well, yeah. thanks for doing that. Oh, you're what can we do to support you guys? Just got to keep on contacting legislators and senators. Right now, uh, Dan. Well, right now, uh, Dan Issa uh, is the head of the committee that has this go through on the national level. And he's completely behind and basically saying that it's all the unions and it's all the Postal Service. Just, you know, there's no money in it anymore because of email and, and online banking and stuff. And it was basically, it was in 2006, there was a voice vote, which rarely ever happens in Congress. And what that happened was is that they said, okay, we're going to make it so all of the 75 years of uh, basically health benefits as well as retirement benefits, we're going to pay it ahead, but we're going to do it in 10 years. 
and it's at a cost of $5 billion a year. So amazingly, ever since 2006, the Postal Service has gone down in their overall money that they've made basically solely because of that. So it's unfair to kind well, of yeah, to calculate your benefits ahead of time. Well, and pay them ahead, yeah. Well, yeah. the other is, is that all they talk about in the media is that. Is that, oh, no, it's the Postal it's not the It's not that program that's forcing them to prepay all their benefits like nobody else does. It's all about the fact that the Postal Service is not making any money. Yeah, and that's not the case. It doesn't really matter, though, because it's, it's a, also a public service yeah. that people rely on. Well, yeah, it's also a constitutional. It's a constitutional organization. Right. So on the same side where people are saying, oh, follow the Constitution, and the other side they're saying, yeah, but give it to the Postal Service. Yeah. Um, well, so people need to get behind this and contact their... Uh, contact their representatives and let them know that all they have to do is reverse that 2006 decision, uh, and basically things will be fine. They might have a little bit of a loss, but what's also happened is, is to be able to make up for this, you know, billions of dollars that they're forced to pay, they've taken their... Uh, they've taken their... Um, their credit line that they have for building business, and they've basically taken it and uh, they can't use it to create more programs so they can make more money. What they're doing is, is they're basically forcing them, plugging up their flow of money, uh, basically to prevent them from growing. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for the good work you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. A lot of good information. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I support you guys. Well, good deal. Thank you. Thanks for talking to us, and we're going to help get that info out, too. Well, good. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. From Portland Indy Media. Awesome. My name is Jamie Partridge. I'm an organizer with communities of Postal Workers United, a fabulous national grassroots network of coalitions of communities and postal workers who stay in postal service. Yeah! 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 General is on a tear to close Half the mail processing plants in this country, he's already closed 30% since July. Oh. Mail, Salem is next on the chopping block. No. This mail processing plant is scheduled to be completely consolidated into Portland by June, which means mail that's sent from Salem to Salem will be trucked all the way to Portland to be, to be sorted and trucked all the way back down to Salem to be delivered. They will delay the mail by days. A hundred good paying union jobs will be eliminated, which will not only, not only affect the workers and their families, but whole, the whole community with that, that income being delimit, eliminated. And mail will be delayed throughout the mid Willamette Valley from the coast to the Cascades, from halfway to Eugene, halfway to Portland. Stupid. And also on the chopping block are Bend and Pendleton this year and Springfield next year, leaving only two mail processing plants in the whole state, Portland and Bedford. It's going to impact the most vulnerable populations, the elderly, the disabled, the people who depend on the mail because they don't have internet access, the people that still, half the people who still pay their bills by mail, People, particularly in the rural communities, small businesses that depend on the mail for invoicing and for billing and for, for supplies and for getting their product out and for advertising. It's not necessary. No. No. The Postal Service is not broke. No. No. Congress created the problem and Congress or the President can fix it. The Postmaster General needs to back off. The Postmasters the Postal Service's own studies have shown, and they've, they've deep-sixed deep the studies, they've pushed them into the background, that these closures and cuts are causing big mailers to leave the system, go to the private sector. Pitney Bowes has got 36 private mail processing plants and they're building more. They're cheaper because it's sweatshop labor. This, these Closures are causing are causing revenue to go away from the postal service. They're going to lose. Their own studies show that they're going to lose more in revenue than they'll gain in the cost cutting of eliminating jobs. It's bad. It's a bad bad move all around. I'm just about to turn the bullhorn over to Representative Brian Lim and Representative Val Hoyle, who are about to join us to tell you why they have they have sponsored. House Joint Memorial Number 15, which calls on Congress to pass the bills that will fix the postal finances. 
The bill, H.R. 630, introduced by our own Senator, uh, Representative Peter DeFazio and uh, Bernie Sanders Bill uh, S-316 in the Senate, the Postal Service Protection Act. So let me introduce Salem's own Representative... No, 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 no. no. Oh, no, no, no. She's oh, that's... Uh, She's the majority leader. Oh, so. majority leader. Sorry, majority leader comes first. Val Hoyle, Representative Val Hoyle from Eugene. Okay, how's everybody doing today? Good. We're here to save a post office because let's remember we have vote by mail in Oregon, so every post office is a ballot box, and we are not going to let them take away our distribution center. It is not right that someone in Salem should send their ballot to Portland to come back here and be counted, that someone should send a letter from Gold Beach to Brookings and have it go to Portland first, or from Eugene to Springfield and have it go to Portland. The fact of the matter is, this is, we need the distribution center here to support our businesses. We need to, to keep our distribution center because this, these are good family wage jobs. And the bottom line is, unlike every other state in the union, this is about keeping the integrity of the ballot, especially in our rural areas. It's critical. Furthermore, Washington, D.C. has put on a... Uh, sorry. Go ahead, no, both of them. Okay. Just Washington, D.C., they have asked the post office to pre-fund retirement benefits and health care for 75 years for people who have not even been born yet. There is not one other agency and no private entity that has these kind of obligations. The fact of the matter is this was done specifically to, to, to undermine the Postal Service and uh, we are not going to let it happen. What we've done in the State House, myself, Representative Brian Clem, Senator Ted Ferrioli, in a bipartisan manner, we have put forward a House Joint Memorial so that we can ask our federal representatives and senators to support the DeFazio plan um, to save our postal service. And let's just remind people that there is not one tax dollar that goes to paying for the postal service. It is completely self-sufficient and would be in the black if it wasn't for this unreasonable, unreasonable obligation. So thank you for being here. We're behind you and we appreciate it. So thank you, first of all, for, for being out here today yourselves. You know, this is what's going to stop these kind of cuts around the country, are real people standing up for these public services. And Val talked about the pre-funding of the pension, the things that drove us to this, but I just want to talk not about how it affects the, the people who receive mail, because you've heard about that, the people who want to vote, the people who need to get their Social Security. I want to talk about the people who work at the post office, because my dad delivered mail for 42 years, and he was a letter carrier. And he got back from Vietnam, and went straight to work in the post office, stayed in Coos Bay on the same route for 35, and finally the last few delivered a different route. So I got to know the people who work inside the post office, the people who, the, the letter carriers, the postmasters, everybody in that building were part of our family. That's what we did on weekends. We went to picnics with the postal family. And to disrupt it in the name of a artificial crisis is immoral, it's completely objectionable, and, and we, as people, have to stand up and do something about it. Now, we're going to do what we can in the Oregon legislature to send our message to Congress. But you know Congress just stepped in already on Saturday service. Congress can certainly step in on closures as well. And that's what we have to ask for help for. And, and I'll tell you, it, 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 you don't get rich working for the Postal Service. But you have decent benefits, you have a retirement, and your kids, like me, can get braces and have straight teeth and have a shot at getting into the middle class and it's a good place to work for a lot of people and it has been for a long long time and we cannot lose this service either it's the people who use it or the people who work here so thank you for being out here you have no idea how much it means to me being the child of a, of a post of a mailman to see people out here standing up for the folks who work at this facility thank you very much all right, all right. thank you representative Brian Clem and representative Val Hoyle now, uh, Reverend John Schweibert is going to talk to us about what comes next.
We're, we're going to go on a march. Well, that, and these folks have to go back and keep voting. Thank you very much for coming. So we got a little uh, little action going uh, coming next. We're going to do on, go on a little march, and we're going to do a little occupation. I hope you're ready, John. This is the People's Postal Service, but it seems pretty obvious that the Postmaster General doesn't remember that. And so we have to teach him today. So we're going to march, and we're going to march around the post office to the other side where there is a public entry, the bulk mail acceptance unit. We're all welcome to go out into the public area because we're the public, we're the people. Now some of us uh, in that facility are going to walk behind the counter uh, because uh, we're prepared to ramp this up. You might want to stay on the public side if you're not ready to participate in that part of the action, but we're all going to be together, whether we're on one side or the other. And we uh, invite all of you to go in and occupy that part of the post office and send a message. Okay? Yeah. Let's go. team up front please okay everybody just want to let you know that uh, the manager of the facility is resisting cooperation with our uh, First Amendment rights here and is claiming that by being in this area we are quote subject to arrest uh, I disagree and I'm not going to leave until the police tell me that we can't be here as part of the public because the post office is is ours yeah. as as the public, yeah. but that's what he has told me. So I wanted everybody to know that. Who's uh, post office? Our, our post, post office. office. Who's post office? Our, our post, post office. office. So I just wanted to give out that warning for anyone who feels uncomfortable staying uh, on basically this side uh, of what they've said. Um, now the people who are submitting themselves to stay or committing themselves to stay here until they promise not to close the plant uh, will stay here regardless. So uh, I'll keep you informed as we go. Okay. May I have your name, please? Yeah. 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 Uh, Basically. No closures, no cuts. No ifs, ands, or buts. No closures, no cuts. No ifs, ands, or buts. Just like a tree, we're standing by the water. We shall not be moved. Just like a tree, we're standing by the water. 
tree that standeth by the water, we shall not be moved. Do you feel like folks who, if those folks in front of you, well, if they interfere with the day-to-day -day business operation of the post office, then we would have to intervene there. But at this point, being out here and to where customers can still have access and interfere. Okay. All right. Okay. Thanks. What's your name? Sergeant Moore. Moore. Okay. All right. This will be a bigger picture. The veterans by nature already have a two percent higher than normal unemployment. Great. We do not need to be adding friendships by the thousands to the unemployment That's right. So, folks, if you're interested in the latest update, uh, the officer told me that, as we probably all expected, since this is we pay taxes to keep this business running, uh, uh, that as long as we're not interfering with business, we are not trespassing, uh, so we're okay here. Uh, the only reason that someone would uh, be in violation of that is if they, for instance, stood in front of the door and people had a hard time getting in and out. So uh, I'm not sure, uh, oh, look at that. Okay, so if anybody has any other questions, let me know. But we're here to stay and keep the post office open. No orders, no cuts, no expands no for us. No orders, no cuts. They just uh, gave me, told me that I misspoke. No tax dollars are used to run the post office, but it's still a public service. So the stamps pay for it, and the and the services that are provided pay for it and pay for it in an affordable way and in a way that's efficient for the community. And if we allow these changes to take place, it's going to become less efficient and more expensive because it's going to be done for profit instead of for people. You have but you no don't have to hurt him. Hands on. Everybody out. Unacceptable. She's she, a veteran. I know. That gives you the right to violate. The no, law. but nobody needs to get hurt over this. Nobody's getting hurt. Okay. Okay. Twenty-five people out of here walked off the job. Okay. As of one February. Fe February first. So now, OPM, uh, Office of Personal Management, Office of Personal Management. It's so screwed up and backlogged that therefore no one ain't getting no money. Well, at least far as I ain't. I've gotten two hundred dollars, one from last month and another two hundred last first of month. Jesus Christ! A retirement. Yeah, your pension, right? That's yeah. Now, what what that, were you expecting that retirement package to be? I'm sorry. What were you expecting that retirement package to be? How much was it you were you expecting okay. to see per month? Let's take, take take you guys for example. You retired. Guess what? Within 30 days, you should have your retirement check. Mm -hmm. Give it to me. We've got nothing. I mean, that that's mine. I don't know if that's why I came over here for. That's a, that. That's, that's ridiculous. It's a long time not to receive any. Well, what? Two hundred dollars is all you've received. I'm sorry. You received two hundred dollars. Receipt. I've gotten two hundred bucks. A hundred bucks a month. I get more on my VA disability. Yeah, and they don't, they don't even I, do you I, well. I, I, I tried, tried uh, what's called unemployment. No. You can't get unemployment, you're getting a retirement check. I'm two months behind on my house payment. Jesus Christ. In 20 years of public service and that's what you get. Wow.
lady who was speaking earlier, and basically physically <laughs> grabbed her and thrust her. Um, it was pretty brutal about it. So, but since we don't have this bad information, is she okay? That was an assault. <laughs> That lady has some medical conditions too, you should be careful. Okay. Okay. Duly noted. This is totally unacceptable. In situations of civil disputes, there's absolutely no reason Thanks. to assault people. Absolutely no reason. You want me to call someone? Joe, can you ask his name? And Could you give us your name? Yeah. You know. Okay. So you're receiving you somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 percent of what I you mean, were that, that, I, I, to have. I'm, I'm just guessing. Okay. Right? But I, I, have a, I don't know. I can't tell you by number. But the only thing that screwed me up is that I'm a diabetic. I'm a type one diabetes diabetic. So it's my medicine. I had to go to my doctor to see if the, see if the health insurance. Can you get your medicine? No, we don't own none. I, I on Facebook or I say Lincoln. If somebody want to get a lawyer. And she, and she said it would cost them 6,000 bucks just for the lawyer up front. And we didn't even talk about if you're going to get it or not. But you got to pay for the lawyer, you even know? so, yeah. So there ain't I no... Mean, I don't care, but nobody don't say nothing. And yeah, I know these guys are going to close. Everybody knows that. So I didn't know. I, see, that's, see, that's on, pers that's on uh, post office property. That's why I didn't thought we, they can go back there. Blocking the door there. Oh. They're, they're blocking the doors there. So that's what I'm doing the blockade, not us. Yeah, we'll be asked to check it out on Facebook. See about getting it on YouTube as well. Sure. Blocking the I'm sorry. Yeah. People are completely not I don't know if they're creating a fire hazard there, but they're blocking. So they blocked with some pretty big pieces of wood. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I they're in there? Oh. No, I don't think they're in there. Oh, okay. So they're yeah. 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 you can get a piece of some spots. <laughs> we used to do, and this is no BS, we used to get 30 GBC of bulk mail, and that's all state mail, from Pendleton, Eugene, the whole nine yards, the whole, whole 970 area, which is all state of Oregon, right? What Portland cannot handle, or Portland does not want to do, they dump it on us and we ship it out. We shipped out to Eugene, God knows, New York City, wherever it's called. So you've been in an over, uh, vital that, overflow No, no, area. What, what we are, what we are, we're the safety valve, what Portland can't do. And now, they're, they're, that's, that's why they're hurting their throat. They're cutting them throats. Well, they're saying that's what they want to do is do the processing in Portland and close this down and do huh? the processing in Portland. But if they already can't handle it, Portland can't handle it, how can they handle all your guys' mail? Well, this, this, this is what, uh, that's what, this is what the it prime. It was a pleasure, sir. Thank, thank you for your thank, service. Thank you. This, this, this we'll is up. a prime example of what this is. Now, they don't, don't, they don't unload it on Eugene and Medford or Pendleton. They load it on us, and we ship it out. For all three counties are that, that is one good scenario about this place. Because I used to supervise, too. Yeah, well, you put 20 <laughs> years in. 204B, what they call 204B, too. But, well, then I guess I better go back there, then. Oh, yeah, well, you heading but, back but there? No, I, uh, that's one a good example right there. That's why they should keep this place. First off, we have the state offices. Yeah. DMV, uh, the IRS, capital. you know, all these closing offices here. So that's why, is that going to, that's going to got to go to Portland. I don't See? think they can handle it. But at least that's what they said. But the good prime example is that like, like holidays, Christmas shit, whatever, that we do all the priority. That we get boatload of priority here. And, uh, 30 GBCs of bulk business garbage mail. What they don't do, they don't ha can't handle it. They dump it on us and then we ship it out. They can't handle closing this one. No. They can't do Portland's it. a big animal house that it is. Oh, yeah. Well, look at your name, sir. Oh, you bet. Okay. Um, uh, Sarah. No, I'm still I'm not 
I walk in and before I know it, I have some man, I have no idea who he is, who's very violently, aggressively, got both hands on my arm, upper right arm, mm -hmm. trying to drag me out of the door. Here I am, I'm wearing my Veterans for Peace penny. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All I'm knowing is, I don't know who this guy is. I have no idea who he is. So all I know is to throw up my hands, open my hands, throw up my arms, and start yelling, do not touch me, do not lay hands on me. This is not okay. Do not touch me. And I don't have peacekeeper training, but somebody who's very well trained told me I handled it well. Thank you, Veterans for Peace, and all the meetings we have sat through reiterating what to do. Now, when this happened to you, was there other people next to you going in that same door? Yeah, we were all going in. I had just filed behind Jamie Partridge, and he just, if the person had calmly come up and said, you know, and even lightly just put his hand on my arm and said, you need to leave, yeah. I would have walked Or maybe up. block you, put your arm up and block you to force you to touch him. But yeah. no, but he didn't do that. No, no, no warning, it's just, this is not public property, you need to leave and started- Pulling you out of the building. Pull, trying yes. to pull me out of the okay. building. Okay, thanks for uh, maintaining throughout that. I, I'm a little rattled. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> I'm glad you're safe and you're not on the inside there being well, subject to... Well, I wanted to, to be on the inside, uh, you know, unfortunately it's like, this is indicative of what the issue is. Now, how did you get back outside? Did they walk you through a different door back no, out? No, uh, basically when I started yelling and people started realizing what was happening, people started coming in to make sure I was okay. And then I noticed the guy left. He went back in the building. I don't see him anywhere now. Yeah. And then at that point, you just walked out. I walked yeah, out. Yeah. I, I that was, was getting a little more confrontational than you had thought or was hoping for. Uh, well, you go, I at least have the knowledge of going into this thinking I could get hurt. They've got pepper spray. They've got batons. You, if you're smart and you do this kind of work, at least in my personal opinion, you be aware that you can get hurt, yeah. but it's still unnerving when out of the blue, on your right side, somebody comes up behind you and starts pulling on you. I hear you. I mean, it isn't like 50 million cops everywhere, and you're kind of like expecting. Yeah. And I think that's part of what unnerved me more oh. was the just unexpectedness of it. Okay. So, Thanks for being here, and I'm sorry you had to go through that. Oh, it's it's it's, it's a learning experience. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> you know, and it was just my upper arm. Thank God I wasn't hit. Yeah. I mean, that's another thing, and that's what somebody was mentioning to the lawyer's guilt representative. I've had two brain surgeries to get hit from like here up. It's dangerous. Right. Well, getting hit at all, it's yeah. dangerous. But more so, shoulders up for me. Okay. So. Well, thank you well, for thank talking you. to me about it. I'm glad I'm documenting this. Let me get your faces. Chaining a door is a bad news. Oh, now they're putting Jack in cuffs. What are you guys gonna do in there to those guys? Damn Guantanamo in there. Cable tied. I'm sorry? Did you get the cable tied now? We love you, Rosie! 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 Rosie!
I know you have to arrest him, but you can thank him also. Yep. I, I'm, I'm done munching. Yeah. Thanks, John. Why'd you get arrested, Jamie? Why'd you do it? Uh, keep this plant from closing, closing a hundred jobs. Save the U.S. Postal Service. Save the U.S. mail. Don't go to jail. I guess we know which one you chose. No cuts. No cuts. No 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 Save the plant. No cuts. Save the mail. Save the mail. Save the Thank you. 100 Thank good you. Family wage job. Yes. Save the plant. Save the yes. plant. Save Salem's mail. Yeah. 100 jobs on the line, not including the horrible black postal service that are resolved. Love you, baby. Seven so were not allowed into a public area and block us. Is anybody entering? So the point is that in our uh, our long tradition of civil disobedience in this country. Folks see this as an attack on a public institution. This was a constitutionally mandated public institution. 
and all the efforts that are happening now, now towards privatization. The intention of the people who are submitting to arrest was to go inside the office and go around to the back of the counter and stay there until the demand was met to keep the, keep the facility open or until they were arrested. The door was locked. Uh, the police said that uh, people could be out there as long as they weren't interfering with business. Uh, the protesters, the people who were protesting this closure, felt strong enough to go inside another entrance uh, to show that they were serious about uh, their commitment. They went inside and that was sufficient to create uh, a disturbance with business which uh, led to trespass, as I understand, the trespassing charges. This was a constitutionally mandated program that's supposed to serve people, not profit. Uh, and the, a lot of these things are being privatized. Already, uh, Pitney Bowles has 36 distribution centers, which is a private company. It's going uh, to cause our cost to go up as consumers and understand that people are making this sacrifice for the good of the broad community. They're not doing it to be rabble-rousers. They're doing it because we think what's happening is against the interests of, of regular people and for the interests of big businesses and corporations. And just one, if they come out of one fact, uh, there is legislation that requires a 75-year uh, pre-funding of, uh, of retirees from the post office for their benefits, which is billions and billions of dollars a year that no other agency has to do this. And it was done specifically to bankrupt the post office. So there are billions of dollars available the other thing people, most people don't know is there's not a penny of taxpayers' money spent to run the postal service. It breaks even by selling stamps and by doing the business that they do. And so it's not an issue of my taxes, it's an issue of my public service.